Year to date, the stock's down 2.5%. Three months down 6%, one month down 7%, and somehow you're going to come on and tell me everything's just great? Boeing has been losing out on both a ton of money and market share recently, and with this slump could come problems in both financing new projects and possibly even to survive long term. But they are a far too important company to the United States to just be allowed to disappear, so what are the real alternatives? Could Boeing actually be sold? Stay tuned. Boeing has had to solve a huge barrage of problems during the past few years. The grounding of the 737 MAX after two tragic crashes was of course the biggest of them, but it was far from the only one. Boeing has also had a multitude of issues with the 787, ranging from the troublesome lithium batteries they had to misbehaving Rolls Royce engines and also issues with the fuselage joints. But teething problems like these can affect any new aircraft type, especially one that has introduced so many new innovations as the 787 has. However, Boeing is also struggling with long delays in certifying the new flagship, the Boeing 777X. After multiple issues with its engines, structure tests and the FAA questioning many aspects of its systems, it now seems like the 777X possibly won't enter service until 2025. That's around five years after Boeing's original plans, and to add insult to injury, the 787 is still experiencing issues with its deliveries to customers. During an investor call in November 2022, Boeing's new CEO, David Calhoun, said that in the beginning of 2020, when he took over Boeing, he genuinely feared for the company's future. And when he said that, he was only referring to the problems that they had before these latest 787 manufacturing and delivery problems and before it was clear that the 777X program was going to be hit with even more delays. Obviously, the return of the 737 MAX have likely eased a lot of these initial fears, but the problems they have and are facing have cost Boeing a lot of money. In the beginning of 2020, before the pandemic hit, Boeing estimated its losses on the 737 MAX alone to around $19 billion. And these were just direct losses connected with the groundings. It didn't include losses from cancelled orders or other associated legal costs. Plus, we still don't know exactly how much money Boeing has lost on the 787 problems. But one thing that we do know is that just in the last quarter of 2021, Boeing took a charge of a four and a half billion dollars on the 787 program. So the costs are likely racking up quite high there as well. Calhoun recently said that he now feels much better about Boeing's future. But the fact is that the company still faces a lot of obstacles during the coming years. Examples include them trying to mend bridges with regulators, whilst also facing some strained relationships with yeah, many of the their suppliers. The term supply constraints are in the engine world, without a doubt. Another headache, which I've talked about in previous videos, is the fact that they have to replace a lot of experienced engineers, many of whom have retired in the past few months. These veterans have to be replaced partially at least by younger, more inexperienced people and that has led some analysts like Liam News to ask questions about Boeing's future quality control. Now to be fair, Airbus also shares some of these challenges, especially when it comes to engine makers and pressure on key suppliers. But in Airbus case, these issues are there because they have set some really ambitious production plans, especially for its A320neo family, so their problems are more of a hold back rather than a real liability. The most notable statement, however, that Dave Calhoun made in that Boeing Investor Day was that the company weren't going to even go to the drawing board for a new aircraft before the end of this decade. Now, Wall Street loved this because that signaled a move that would promise to keep Boeing spending for research and development under control, which, given all of the money that Boeing has lost recently, sounded like a really smart financial move. But as I've explained previously, Boeing is already falling dangerously far behind Airbus in terms of market share. The simple reality is that the number of aircraft sales will determine how much money each of these companies will have access to in the future, not just for their research and development, but also for their survival as independent companies. Boeing have stated that they expect to only have around 40% of the single aisle market soon, with Airbus taking almost 60%. And some analysts think that this split could actually be as bad as 70% to 30% in Airbus' favor. 
If that happens, it would mean that Boeing would be making less than half as many aircraft as Airbus is in absolute numbers, which would have exactly the same effect on income, meaning realistically that the game would be over. Because with those production figures, Airbus would likely have enough money to be able to outcompete and outdevelop any product that Boeing would try to launch with faster production and better innovations, making Boeing a sitting target. By the way, another group that you could refer to as a sitting target are travelers who are not using a good VPN. Today's sponsor, NordVPN, gives you safe access to any Wi-Fi network and the possibility to stream your favorite shows and movies no matter where you are in the world. Whether you're on a business trip or a leisure vacation, using public Wi-Fi networks in lounges or restaurants can put your personal information at risk. Hackers and cyber criminals could intercept your data and steal your passwords, bank details and other sensitive information if you're not careful. Using a VPN like Nord is a good first step. Plus obviously using secure passwords, two-factor identification and not clicking on suspicious links, but that goes without saying. Also, let's not forget about those pesky geo restrictions, stopping you from accessing your favorite content just because you're away from home. That actually happened to me recently when I went to Thailand, but thanks to NordVPN I was able to access the content I wanted and it felt like such a life hack. Just one click and the problems just disappeared. So if you want to start protecting your data and enjoy unrestricted access to your favorite content, then get yourself NordVPN by going to nordvpn.com slash mentor now, right now. Every purchase of a two-year plan will receive a four-month bonus and you can also use your account on six different devices. Thank you NordVPN, now back to the video. For all of those reasons that I've just listed, many believe that in the next few years, Boeing could be in need of some serious financial assistance to remain competitive as an aircraft maker. This assistance likely won't come in the form of a repeat of its previous attempts to join forces with Embraer or any other smaller manufacturer, because this time they will need a lot of money. Their try with the Embraer tie-up was all about Boeing's lack of design capacity at a time when Embraer's engineers were just done designing the E2 series. But in that relationship, Boeing would have been the financially stronger of the two partners and that attempt happened before COVID, before the MAX and yeah, before everything that we've now just talked about. So where are Boeing going to find a partner strong enough to provide the multitude of billions that they will need to start competing at the same level as Airbus towards the end of this decade? Well, in this theory, we're assuming that Boeing really meant what they said about not launching a new aircraft before 2030. And we're also assuming that they really will shrink down to around 30% of the airliner market share by then, which would be fully realistic if they don't have any new aircraft to add to the market. In theory, at least, Boeing could get the financial support they need in order to design a new aircraft from the US government. And in the smaller scale of things, this is kind of already happening. As I explained in a recent video I did about the transonic truss brace wing, Boeing and NASA are already working together on a number of technologies that could be vital for any new single aisle airliner. NASA is obviously state funded and that strange looking TTBW concept isn't the only similar project NASA is developing which could benefit Boeing. They're also working on a program aimed at developing out of autoclave carbon fiber composites, similar to work that Airbus is doing, aimed at speeding up production and reduce the cost of the production of these vital parts. Other projects include exploring battery electric technologies and their certification challenges, as well as working on new aircraft engine technologies. But while NASA can do great research work, they simply can't design Boeing's next new aircraft for them. And at least for now, the money involved in these NASA research projects are only a small fraction of the billions it would take to design an all new airliner. And when it comes to the US government slipping in more money into the Boeing pockets, well, we'll get to that in a second. So what else could Boeing do to find funding then? Well, the refusal of Boeing's management to even discuss the launch of a new airliner anytime soon could actually be pointing to an alternative strategy, which is to change the shape of the whole company. According to analysts like Richard Abulafia, this could include breaking up Boeing, separating its current divisions into separate entities. Abulafia explains that contrary to what many in the industry believes, there are many people inside of Boeing's current management who would regard such a breakup as beneficial. That's because it would possibly allow the company to focus on its core strength in order to unlock value, presumably mainly for their shareholders. 
If that would happen, it's likely that one or maybe more of these new smaller Boeing companies could be bought up by other players in the market. You see, Boeing isn't just building airliners. Boeing Commercial Airplanes, or BCA, is just one division of the company. There is also Boeing Defense, Space and Security, or BDS, that builds military jets, space launch vehicles, satellites and spacecraft. Plus, there is a financing arm called Boeing Capital, which soon might be merged with Boeing Commercial Airplanes. Now, in case it's not clear, Boeing Commercial Airplanes is by far the biggest part of the company, with more than twice as many employees as Boeing Defense, which is the second largest part. But these other arms of the company aren't without their own problems either. Boeing Defense is handling a number of projects that have faced serious delays or other issues lately, like the KC-46 tanker, the VC-25B program, which is probably better known as Air Force One, as well as the Starliner spacecraft. So, could another American aviation giant like Lockheed Martin, for example, get involved here and maybe even buy the commercial airplane part? Well, at the moment, Lockheed and Boeing are competitors in a number of different military programs, like the KC-46 tanker, where, for example, Lockheed has partnered with Airbus to offer up an alternative to Boeing's product. Lockheed and Boeing are also competing internationally for fighter jet sales, where Lockheed's F-16 and F-35 often go head-to-head -head with Boeing's F-15 and the F-A-18. But would a potential merger still be possible? Well, this is where things get a little bit more complicated. The defense and space side of aviation is fiercely competitive, but unlike the commercial airliner business, it also features some, well, let's say odd alliances. Boeing and Lockheed may be rivals in some ways, but in other markets they're actually working very closely already. For space launches, Lockheed and Boeing have a well-known joint venture called ULA, or United Launch Alliance, that operates their Delta family of launch vehicles. The two companies are also working together on helicopters in a futuristic project called the Sikorsky Boeing SB-1 Defiant, where Sikorsky, of course, is owned by Lockheed Martin. Oh, and by the way, if you think that those partnerships aren't strange enough, Boeing is even partnering with Airbus for a potential sale of military helicopters in the United Kingdom. Say what? Which clearly just shows that in this field, anything is possible. Size-wise, Boeing and Lockheed Martin are similar in terms of overall revenue. Boeing has more employees and they obviously had a much higher revenue than Lockheed did before the MAX crisis. But Unlike Boeing, Lockheed is currently profitable, and in case you didn't know, Lockheed Martin is also the largest defense contractor in the world. However, this fact, the size of these two companies, is probably the biggest hurdle for them joining forces, at least in their present form. In the 1990s, after the end of the Cold War, mergers and takeovers in the US aviation industry became very common. Hundreds of companies merged to finally become less than a dozen because everyone understood that the world had changed and that there would be less of a government cake to eat from. But today the world is changing again. If Russia's war in Ukraine is anything to go by, we could possibly be heading back into a Cold War situation, potentially creating need for more independent companies for the government to work with if the need would come. So this means that authorities like the Department of Justice in the United States is much more skeptical to mergers right now. They just don't want to risk losing precious engineering talent and potential production volume. Now, obviously, mergers between companies that are already quite dominating in their industries would also meet regulatory opposition for antitrust reasons. And <laughs> when it comes to American aviation giants, Boeing and Lockheed are about as big as they come. But the question here is, does any viable alternative really exist since we can safely assume that an industry gem like Boeing would never be allowed to fully disappear? The problem here is that as inconceivable as a merger between these giants might sound, a multi-billion dollar funding by the US government to allow Boeing to design a future aircraft or even to survive is even more inconceivable. On several occasions over the past two decades, Boeing has made multiple trade complaints against Airbus, Bombardier and other competitors regarding what they perceived as illegal government support. 
In the case of Airbus, Boeing has complained about that kind of support regarding the development of the Airbus A380 and even the A350. And those complaints led to an infected dispute lasting more than 16 years and who ultimately led into an ugly tariff war who didn't get resolved until 2021. During the dispute, Airbus and the European Union counter-argued that Boeing benefited from NASA research, which again wasn't really the sort of monetary level that would allow the development of an airliner, but still it was big enough to be seen by the Europeans as a problem. So if that sort of NASA funding multiplied, or if the US government would funnel money directly into Boeing in some other form, you can be absolutely sure that we would see another trade war erupt. And nobody wants to see that. Plus, it is also very likely that using tax money to fund or even to bail out Boeing would draw complaints even from within the United States, depending on what else is going on politically. But if we go back to Lockheed potentially buying up parts of Boeing, there's unfortunately another problem as well. And that's the very fact that Boeing are producing airliners. And that's because Lockheed has vowed never to get involved in the airliner business ever again. They made that decision after their development of the L-1011 TriStar, a remarkable but ultimately commercially unsuccessful airliner. The TriStar first flew in 1970 and it introduced a lot of innovations. As an example, it was the first airliner to have an Autoland system. It experienced some serious teething problems with its engines, plus the fact that the use of a tail-mounted third engine made upgrading to different engines very difficult. All of these factors led to the fact that this beauty wasn't as successful as it could have been. And when its production ended, Lockheed announced that it would stay out of the airliner business from that date onwards. But of course, Lockheed said that back in 1981 and a lot of things have changed since then. And also, Lockheed could just take over Boeing's defense arm, staying away from the world of airliners altogether. And if Lockheed would be considered too big for the regulators to do that, well, then perhaps Northrop Grumman could be another possible Boeing suitor for that piece of the business. But if that would happen and the defense arm of Boeing would be spun off to one of these competitors, then who would take over Boeing commercial airplanes? Well, Richard Abulafia believes that a company like GE Aviation would be a perfect suit for that role. This would still likely meet regulatory opposition, plus it would create some other odd interrelationships since GE is powering a lot of Airbus aircraft, either directly or through its CFM joint venture with Safran in France. But it could definitely still be a possibility. But even if such a merger happens, the question still would be whether or not this new company would have what it takes to design new airliners and to compete with Airbus effectively. This is quite unclear at the moment, but we do know that Boeing is simply too valuable for the United States to be allowed to simply wither away and die. So are there any alternatives to all of this then? Well, yes, or at least that's what analysts like Richard Abulafia believe. Boeing should just simply forget about focusing on free cash flow and start working seriously on designing a new airliner right now. Innovations in hydrogen propulsion, the TTBW or the CFM RISE, could hold the key to aviation's future. But for aircraft the size of an Airbus A320 or a 737, these technological advances are all way into the future. And for Boeing to survive in its current form, they should work on creating something incrementally better right now and not wait for these moonshots to materialize. A new, more efficient and potentially upgradable Boeing single aisle would sell really well and could be the key to keep the Boeing we all know intact and that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Now, check out this video next or enjoy this playlist. Consider supporting me by buying a t-shirt or sending a super thanks, it really helps. And I will hold a new Zoom hangout with my Patreons next week and it would be lovely to see you guys there. Your invitations will then come on Patreon. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.